It's November 19th, 2004. I'm Sue Cohen and Brenda Kyle with the San Marcos Heritage Association, and we have the distinct pleasure of visiting with Mr. Frank Contreras today. So, Frank, I can't wait to hear your story. Can you start off by telling us a little bit about your early family and your early years in San Marcos? Surely. I, uh, by the way, my, my birth certificate says Francisco Contreras, but when I went to school, they said the name was too long, so they changed me to Frank. So uh, now I'm beginning to use Francisco once in a while. Anyway, I was born um, here in Hayes County out of the Jackson Farm. That's where we used to live. Uh, we uh, came to San Marcos about 1939, 1940, and uh, we live at uh, uh, 342 North Craft Street. That's uh, where the city park is. In fact, our house was right there where next to the swimming pool. It was, uh, it was uh, North Craft, and then there was another street next to the, next to the river uh, before we uh, came to us, and that was Reynolds. What year were you born? I was born 1934. 1930, and you moved here, in, wow, okay. And, uh, So uh, at home, the, uh, there was no English spoken, all Spanish. My uh, father and my mother spoke, uh, my father spoke a little more English, but uh, uh, the language at home was Spanish all the way through. And uh, I'm the youngest of the family of nine, and um, my sisters and my brothers tried to prepare me to go to school to to what to what to answer, and uh, because the teachers didn't didn't speak Spanish at all, uh, non-Spanish speakers, and they they uh, they they uh, we dramatized the fact that who was a teacher, I was a student, and this is when they ask you, what's your name, you say Francisco Contreras. Now let's let's try it again. But when I got there. And the teacher asked me, what's your name? I would, what? Okay, 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 you say? <laughs> anyway, that was one of the experiences that, that I uh, felt. And I, in, in, uh, at, those at, that, at, at that time, uh, I would say high percentage of this, uh, the population at Southside Elementary was, uh, his, well, 100% Hispanic and the majority were migrant farm workers. That meant that we left in September, early September, and returned in, in December to school. Uh, those that were not migrant went to school there. And I went to school there from first through sixth. Now, the practice at that time was that if you didn't speak English, you would go to low first, promoted to high first then promoted to low second, then high uh, second, and then if you knew enough English, you were promoted to third. So that means that I was two years behind uh, my, my age, and all of us were that way at that time. So when I went to junior high with Henry, he was, uh, I was two years older than, three years older than, than, than Henry. And when and, you were, uh, your father was, a, your parents were migrant workers, so when you left, where did y'all go? We, we went in the summer, we went to South Texas, um, uh, around the um, Corpus Christi area, that where you live, uh, Robstown, Driscoll. So cotton. Uh, cotton. You picked cotton. We, pick, we, we, we were, we, our, 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 our uh, choice of work was picking cotton. So we went there. Uh, then came home, and then in September, we migrated to the Lubbock area. And that's where the cotton, uh, by that time, was ripe and uh, ready to be picked. So your whole family of nine, 11, I guess, the kids and the yes. parents. Yes, and we went, we went in groups. There were other uh, people that went and we caravaned and went to, to that area. I remember that I liked, I always liked school. And uh, uh, I remember with sadness the uh, when it rained, we didn't work, and we went to a little town uh, called Rawls, Texas. 
and as we drove in, there was an elementary school, and all the kids were there. Uh, and I looked at them, and I said, gosh, I wish I was in school. I so wish September I to December, you were working in the fields, and then you would come to school. In middle of, of December. And be enrolled then. Yes. So I actually missed uh, three, three months out of the year. I, so I went to school nine years out of the 12, if you put it that way. Uh-huh. And uh, now I had a choice of most, of most of my friends that migrated that way waited until January to go to school. My parents insisted that I should, upon returning, that I should enroll in school. So that was, but we, we worked. We, uh, the, uh, I remember, I, I guess I was, since I learned to walk, I was out in the fields helping. And, um, the South Texas, the heat of uh, the sun, the the uh, the Corpus Christi, the humidity. Oh, it was. I remember the the shirts would be wet with perspiration, and that felt good. Uh, when we were in uh, the Lubbock area, October it started to be cold, and uh, the by November, December was freezing, and uh, to get up early in the morning go out to work. Uh, there was a, a barrel where they kept the water and you had to break the ice if you wanted to drink. The, um, we had to take uh, tacos to eat at noon. There was no sanitary conditions. There's no places to go to the restroom. And you worked it, a long day, I would imagine. Uh, it was uh, sun up to sundown. Sundown. Uh, except on rainy days so now on junior high uh, well, let's the, go back to elementary before okay, we get okay, to junior uh, high where did you go to elementary school uh, Southside Elementary which okay. is located now in Lee corner of uh, uh, what is it LBJ and, and, and Lee Street at that time it, there were three wooden buildings there was a, a long building that had about six classrooms and to each side facing LBJ uh, there was uh, two houses, two, two, bed, two, two, two room uh, that were schools. Well there was another one, there was one facing uh, the opposite which is uh, what, Lee? No, um, there was another building. Mickey, Mickey, uh-huh. Mickey, and, and those were, and we had... Uh, and that school was only for Hispanic children? Only for Hispanic, 100%. And the restroom, we didn't have indoors restrooms. We had to go outside, uh, drink water. There were no drinking water inside. The, uh, I remember when I came back, everybody came back, and we were as many as 50 students Per classroom, fifty. And as I wrote in my paper, I remember clearly uh, uh, that there was no desk for me, so I would sit in the crate in the back of the room. And uh, the I remember we didn't have books for everybody. Of course, we didn't have supplies. Um, uh, there was no teacher aides. Uh, just and you teacher. only spoke Spanish, I and only the teachers. Spoke, oh, they! Uh, I got hit several times by speaking Spanish. But my my reason for speaking Spanish was that I would go to visit with those that spoke English, and I would say when the teacher was not watching, I would say, "What did the teacher say? What am I supposed to do?" Is that uh, how you learned English by? How did they teach you English if they, they only didn't, they, spoke English and you only spoke Spanish? They didn't teach. Uh, did they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't speak. Uh, they didn't taught English as a second language as we have now. So how did you learn? We just picked it up. We just mm-hmm. picked it up. You sink or swim. And, and that's, I think that's one of the reasons that there was such a big dropout. 80 or 90 percent of um, the students uh, didn't go to junior high. Uh, 
But you were the youngest in your family, and your brothers and sisters encouraged you to yes, continue yes, your education. Yes. Well, see, uh, my oldest brother, Jesse, uh, went, uh, we lived on a farm, and my father really believed in education, and we had an uncle that lived uh, in the North Graff Street, opposite of where we moved later. And he went to first grade, uh, I don't know how many years, uh, in the elementary, to center points. There was a school there. And he went, he was, uh, he moved to town with my, my uncle and my aunts so he could attend school. So he completed the um, uh, middle school and high school uh, because he was going at, attending, uh, lived in, in, in town. We couldn't, he couldn't come every day from out there. So, uh, was well, that a, a Hispanic school in Center Point too? That was a segregated. They, they were segregated well? too. Yes. Yes. Now, um, when I went to college and I uh, met, uh, uh, I had a degree in education, I learned that that at that time the school got paid based on a school census. In other words, they counted in the summer, and, and when when the when the population was a high, they they went to ha to the houses and counted the number of children. So the school earned the school district earned the money based on the number of students identified. Now you have the number uh, the the uh, 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 attendance. So if you really didn't went to school, they didn't look for us, or they. But I figured we had, let me see, we had, we had 50 students per classroom. I figured that we had earned at least 20, 25 teachers based on that population. Yet we didn't have uh, enough teachers, we didn't have textbooks, we didn't have material. Uh, apparently the money was going some other place. But I learned that that was the situation. It was not until much later that the Gilmore Aiken law passed it. it ever now it's based on, on, on uh, school attendance. So that was the situation then. Now you I, said you uh, were born on the Jackson farm. Where was the Jackson farm? And what kind of farm was it? it uh, my father uh, at that time was migrant, and uh, it's, uh, let me see, in the area where we have the um, Civic Center, where the mm -hmm. that area it's not it's, it's not part of town. Uh, Interstate thirty five. You'll take a left before uh, right after you go to um, uh, First Main Road, which is uh, anyway. It's 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 in that area by Center Point Road, or it's before you get to the mall. Uh -huh. Between uh, the San Marcos and the mall, there was to the left going south. That's where the Jackson. Were you born in a? Home, not a hospital. Uh, in a home, yes, in a home. Wow. Yes. And your father came here from Mexico. He came from Mexico, and it's a very interesting story. He, there were about uh, had three brothers and three sisters. He was the oldest. Uh, uh, he was he was the youngest, and and his father, my grandfather. Um, died when he was young, uh, when that had that big epidemic. Uh, he, he, uh, he, so he was working, he ha had a job when he was about 12, 13, 14, working with the owner of the hacienda, uh, cleaning the house. And, and at mid-afternoon, his, 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 one of his jobs was to take a glass of milk to the owner who was resting and he's relaxing. One day he was, he took the glass of milk, trip over and spill it on the, on all, all over the, the owner. So he was so mad that he got a machete and was gonna kill my father. So my father ran up to the Sierra to the hills. Didn't have time to tell my mother, his brothers and sisters that he had run. He just disappeared. He tells me that he was there in the uh, Sierra for several days 
didn't know what to eat. Then a man went he was by. was just a teenager. 14 years old, 13, 14 years old. He, there was a man going to San Luis Potosí, to the city, which is about a walk, and I would say it's a three hours, four hours. So he followed him. And we later went back, we went back, I took him back several times. He showed me the park where he used to stay at night under the bushes, under there. Then he heard about people coming to Texas. He joined a group and came over came over and uh, he said, you really don't know hunger until you experience it. He said, we didn't have anything to eat. He said, I remember getting to Laredo, crossing Laredo, and after we crossed Laredo, there were some onion fields. And that's what I ate for several days, onions. onions. And that's why he, he, he would tell us, uh, Frank, he said, I don't, I, I don't want you to suffer like I did. I don't want you to go through the hardships. I want you to get an education. He told all my brothers and sisters. That was pretty forward thinking for he that said. time. And in my house, it was not a, 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 a discussion whether we wanted to finish school or not. It was not an acceptable conversation. We were going to finish high school. But that wasn't the conversation in a lot of homes at that time. Well, they had to work. Yeah. They had to work. Now, and now they're going to school now, uh, uh, six, uh, six months out of the year. That's uh, so. You have to be a speed uh, learner to learn yeah. it in that time. So when I graduated from high school, I'm sure he told me about my brothers too because my brothers went to college. He said. Well, they did? Yes. My wow. sister didn't. I have four sisters. They didn't. Four sisters. At that at that time, I think I think that the the philosophical or the point of view was that uh, girls didn't know need to go to school. So none of my four sisters went to school. Now he told me, he said, "Daddy, I, I I'm going to graduate. I oh by the way, I my only complete year was my senior year. I told my daddy, I said, uh, Dad, I I I don't want to go this year. I want to stay." He said, okay, you stay with your uncle. And he did a full senior, year. And I got a full year. And when I finished, that I, was I, in I 1955. Said, I, yes. And I said that I, uh, and I, I, I did very well in school. I did very well and, uh, in high school. And I said, Dad, I'm, I'm going to finish. And I, uh, I want you to know, I said, great, great, my son. And of course, we're speaking Spanish. And he said, now, what are you going to do next? You gonna continue going to with me, share, uh, following the crops, or you want to go to college? I said I, I want to go to college. I said I want to go to college. And now I saw my counselor. My counselor th uh, told me it was a mistake for me to college. He said, Frank, you're better off if you go into the army, the armed forces. Now, high and school was at San Marcos High School? San Marcos. Out on High 123? No, it's right here. It was at still the, at the university then? No, it was oh, up it, here at... Uh, where Lamar School uh, is yes, now, over it, there on... Yes, uh, yes. And, of course, I I didn't want to go to the... I wanted to get an education, so, so I did. Wow. I went to, to college major in education and went out and taught and I wanted more education. I wanted to be a good teacher. So I got my master's in education with a certificate in admin school administration. So from there I went to the University of Texas and All right. We'll go back to your later years, but I want to hear more about those early years in San Marcos. What was it like to be a youngster in Back in San Marcos, you said you lived where the city park. That that was that whole area where the city park is. It was practically uh, it was where you cross the railroad tracks. You always have the railroad tracks, and then you have the the Hispanic community. Right. Yeah, it, it's across the tracks. That's but there's street. Uh, you it, said it's, there was street. Only, the it's street. only a figure of speech. That's, that's yeah. That's true. Those things aren't even there anymore. Uh, no. So we lived, we, we lived, we lived, we lived, uh, um, 
I'm sad that they, they forced my daddy to sell that property because we were next to the river. That's where I spent most of the summers when we were not working. We would go to the river and swim, a lot of us, and that's where we, we um, fish, we uh, swim, we knock down wasp nests. Uh -huh. uh, uh, we sometimes uh, built a little fire and cooked uh, the fish, and that was the, what we did. So there were uh, homes uh, there where City Park is now? Yes. All that area, and... Was that urban I have, renewal, I, or...? Urban renewal bought it. Huh. That one time there was urban renewal, and I, we didn't want to sell. Uh, and know that uh, south of the river, there were both communities, north and south. Uh, north of the, uh, of the river, there was housing, but that was Anglo living there south we were there so the only the park only is the south part of the river they bought us out and what they did is they uh, city council passed a some kind of resolution that we could not get building permits to improve the houses nor they could fi fix the streets so by the time it came around to sell of course we were not able to to, to do any improvements what year was that roughly uh, I was say in the 60s, in the 60s, yeah, because I was uh, I was city council in 65, and it must have been around that area time when I objected to the way they had structured it, uh -huh. and uh, they were able to put there that it only be for city um, purpose. It has changed since so then. So the, the city, the, they bought your home and tore down all the homes. Where did y'all move? We moved across to, my father moved across to the other side of the river. And we were able to find a house there. What street was that? Uh, it's a Houston Street. Now it's... Uh, oh, Cheatham Street. Uh, Cheatham Street. And now I, I bought a house that I'm fixing. It's next to where my parents live. So it's a beautiful area. So, that area is things come full circle. That area is becoming popular again. Yes, yes. So that was the situation. Uh, know that I uh, my my uh, participation in school was very limited, uh, from elementary, middle school, and high school, because I came back to school in December. Mm -hmm. So junior high, you mentioned high school. I didn't. I missed all that football. Kind of the, all the extracurricular activities. I could not. I was not eligible. Right. To participate, and you know the. I remember. You weren't even in town. For no, the games. no, and um, I remember the hay rides. Uh, I remember the school dances that we had, and uh, learning how to dance. What were the hay rides? I don't know. I, I somehow it it, it, uh, it must have been Christmas. Okay. It must have been uh, uh, whether we went around. It could have been uh, because I uh, I was in choir. It's, uh, uh, one of my favorite teachers was my choir teacher, Mr. Higgs. Mr. Higgs taught me something that made me uh, feel good. He said, Frank. You, this is you, you with me right now. He said, you're going to start with an A. It's up to you to keep an A. Okay. Well, by See, most high teachers start with a zero and right. you build it up. Mm -hmm. He started at the top. And well, by junior high and high school, the Hispanics were integrated in with the Anglos, right. but the African Americans had not been integrated yet. That's correct. That's correct. Now, was there prejudice against Hispanics uh, beyond the schools, like in the movie theater, when you went to restaurants or movie theaters, I know that. Yes, yes. That uh, experience that that was around town. In as San well? Marcos, uh, you could go to restaurants, any restaurants. Uh, the blacks couldn't. Uh, the movies you could go to the movies. When we went to Lubbock, the restaurants it says whites only. Uh, the movies theaters. And that included Hispanics, I guess. 
Right, right. Uh, we we couldn't go to the movies. Well, there, there was there, there during the harvest season. There was a theater that that uh, dedicated to Spanish speaking films. We go to the restaurants. It was set whites only. Uh, I remember that later on, I was in college, and my father was still migrating and uh, had an accident, a car accident in Lubbock. So I went to see him. Uh, and we stopped at Mason, Texas. We were driving. My, my mother was um, with me, and I wanted to go to the restroom. And we stopped to get, get gasoline. And I said, could I have the key to the restroom? He said, no. He said, I don't want you to dirty it. I said, I've never been here before. I said, oh, okay. I, wow. When we migrated, we wouldn't care about and trucks. We knew that we were not uh, allowed in certain places. Did you go as a group for what reason? It for safety purposes? Uh, well, it was just time to to move. Okay. Time to move, and I guess some safety, some uh -huh. uh, relieve the anxiety of moving. And if we, one car we would, had trouble, the other cars right. would be there to help. And we would stop. We would stop. Somebody wanted to go to the restroom. Wanted to go to whatever. The men went to one side of the road, and the women went to the other side. Wow. When, when it got dark, we stopped. We didn't travel at night. At that time, it took us two days to get to Lubbock. Where did you sleep? Out on the uh, uh, on side of the road. And we would, because we couldn't go to restaurants, so the women cooked something for supper and, and cooked breakfast, and we took off again. Time to go to the restroom, you stop. Women went one side, men went to the other side. And you did th the same thing on the way back to San Marcos? Right, Lubbock. yeah. Wow. And I, I, I've always wanted to live in San Marcos. And um, uh, when I went to teach in Del Rio, it was because I couldn't get a job here. I couldn't get a job in Lockhart, Sigui, nor New Braunfels. They were not hiring. Latins, Mexicans, as we call. Uh, but I wanted to stay here because migrating, going to th those hardships, and, and that coming was in back, the 1959. Yes. There weren't Hispanic teachers in the San Marcos School there District. There was two two teachers. I was the third one to hire. I wanted to get back so bad, uh, so so um, uh, soon, and wanted to be back home. That when we hit uh, just outside, uh, going coming from Wimberley, there's a little hill that you can see the villains of San Marcos. You could not imagine the joy that I felt in my heart and my soul. Oh, it was so beautiful that feeling. I wish I could replicate that. That was uh, so. I wanted to stay here. I wanted to stay here, so I. I applied and nothing applied, and I applied in Corpus also. I didn't get a job there uh, because uh, we used to migrate to Corpus, and I like the the mm -hmm. the bay, this that, that area, and I. Uh, so you lived here your whole life, except for the years you taught in Del Rio. Uh, right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And they finally hired you. You were persistent. I was persistent, and by that time, nobody's really self-made. Because by that time, uh, Celestino Mendes and Agustin Lucio, who just passed away this, this week, uh -huh. they were pioneers. They, they were really, uh, I wish you had uh, known them. Um, they were always wanting to, to have uh, uh, more participation in, in school and in, in, in city government, in county government, in the banks and all of that. So Celestino, I went to Celestino and, and he, I said, Celestino, I can't get a job here. Said, You're in the school board. He, he was said, the first Hispanic on the school board. Yes. And Ever. then I was seen, then I was seen Lucio. Uh -huh. And that was, that was their, their mission, try to get Hispanics uh, uh, to, 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 to come and teach. Uh, so... Uh, Josie Hutchinson was was the 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 superintendent then, and 
in a hot applied in New Braunfels, I had applied here, I had applied it in the Lockhart, Seguin, and the Job Corps Center. So then finally, it was uh, it was uh, so difficult uh, for me because, well, not difficult because I know I knew what I wanted to do. They called me from New Braunfels for an interview. My God, I said, "Wow, I'm still I'm close, close now." Close. <laughs> well, the the uh, the the director of personnel, his name name was Faust. Faust. And he spoke with a very heavy German accent. The 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 WCM feel of, uh, I could hardly understand it. But anyway, he told me that uh, that I uh, I could teach. I, he would hire me. I had to teach at the Mexican school, which was the Lone Star School, with the understanding that I improve my my English. And my pronunciation of English. This I is after you're a college graduate. Because he, I had a very heavy uh, Mexican accent. And I thought to myself, oh, I wish I could tell him that I can't understand him either, you know? <laughs> 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 but I didn't. I knew better. <laughs> I, I, I knew better. <laughs> I knew better. So by then, it was a matter of, of uh, a week or two. Then they called me from the Job Corps Center, and they offered me a job. And the Job Corps paid more than, much more than, than, than the New Braunfels. And they thought you spoke just fine, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And then they called me from San Marcos. Wow. Ah, uh, yeah, within a period of two weeks. Wow. After how many uh, years were you in Del Rio? Six. So of course, you know what I uh, what I chose to, to 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 come back home. Where did you teach when you came here, and what did you teach? I taught at uh, at uh, Crockett Elementary, uh -huh. fifth grade, fifth grade, and um, by that time, Joe Hutchison was the. I th I taught one year. There. Then the superintendent called me. In. It, it was night. It was early. It was not. And I answered the phone. It was says, Frank. This is Josie Hutchison. Yes, sir. I said, What did I do? Oh my God! What did I do? Oh my God! What did I do? He said, Frank. I've, I've been. You taught here. You uh, you did well this year. How would you like to be principal of? of Bonham. I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said, well, aren't you going to ask me how much I want to pay you? I said, no, no. I, <laughs> I, I, that's not imp uh, important to me right now. So he, and that's what the school board was giving him a lot of static about not uh, hiring uh, Mexicans. Things were changing in San Marcos, finally. Uh, uh, yes. Yes, so so I became uh, principal, and uh, so that was that. I don't know how we got there, but to what this conversation. Well, you knew but, when you went to college, you wanted to be an educator and educate. You yes, knew that. yes, I knew that. That's when. That's when, and I was very concerned about the dropout rate. That's why I came back. Uh, to get my master's in the summer. I was teaching in Del Rio and coming back to San Marcos in the summers to get my master's because I, I, I couldn't get uh, everybody to learn to my expectations. I said, I must be, I need to learn something more. I wanted everybody to make an A. You know, that's, that's not realistic. You, you can only progress to a certain degree, but you progress. So I came uh, to San Marcos and got my degree in, in education. And uh, by the way, the, the university also had uh, when I went to school. There was a lot. Of, there were a lot of uh, things that were uh, wrong. Where did you go to the university? Here in San Marcos, uh, Texas State. 
Teachers College. You went to Southwest Texas. Southwest <laughs> Texas Teachers College. <laughs> Before the name But let changed. me tell you, I, 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 I wanted to improve. Here I was, I had, I, in the process of, of learning English, I, I noticed that my Spanish was not as, as fluent, so I decided to take uh, Spanish, uh, Dr. Allen, and experience this means that you have a good chance of winning. And they wanted they already to move you into a place where you couldn't win? Where I, I don't know, but uh, they didn't, uh, yeah. So you won? I won. What year was that? And who was the mayor when you were on council? Uh, Sarur. Sarur. Uh, uh, oh. And the, uh, I was so glad of the results that out of the whole south area, uh, I get, I got six votes against me. Out to the other person. In the north, all I needed was uh, ten percent, and I got that ten percent. Were you the only Hispanic on city council at the time? No, there was uh, there was uh, Luciano Flores. Oh, okay. At, at, uh, and what year came. was that? Was that in the? That was in 1970. Around okay. that, yeah. Okay. Because I had to, I had to resign. Uh, my position uh, when I worked with the uh, Texas Education Agency at that time it was unconstitutional to have a, a state employee uh, a school uh, employee oh. to be uh, uh, at city council because the Constitution said that uh, uh, a person who cannot hold a, a place, an election uh, of honor and trust if he's a, a, a school official. So you took a job with the state and you had to resign yes, from city council? Uh, yes, uh, three years later. And uh, it, it was a, by that, I, I, I have good memories uh, also of uh, uh, Texas Education Agency. Um, they, there was at Texas A&M, at Bryan, Texas, that that year, the second year that I was there, third year, the all the city councilmen were from the University of Texas A&M. And uh, somebody looked at the eligible requirements and determined that that we couldn't hold a position of honor and trust like that. Uh. So they filed a grievance, they filed a lawsuit and they send a communication all over the state to all the state offices. To change it. And the they call me my my my. I don't know if you want to go that route, but uh, it's an interesting story. Uh, uh, I had to I had to resign. Uh, well, they didn't pay. Uh, been in city council, so uh, they the the commissioner told me, Frank, we cannot pay you as long as you're uh, city council. You, we cannot pay you. You either you're either one or the other. So you had to resign from city council, or your full time job wouldn't pay you. That's right. Then it turned out that uh, that in the law I couldn't resign because the this was in December, because in March there are going to be elections, and there was a period of time that you could resign, but you in the books you would still be a. Uh... So there was a bind that I couldn't. Wow. So the uh, commissioner called me, told me the situation, and uh, he told his, uh, he, uh, he called his uh, counsel, legal counsel, two lawyers, called him over, and I was there, and of course I was there and uh, with him, and he said, I want you to research this, that Frank can't be paid. And it was like a Monday, and he said, let's meet Thursday. So we met again, and he says, there's no way we can pay Frank. He said, find a way to pay Frank, provided that I don't go to jail. <laughs> so we met again, and they found somebody that had Until give, March. No, so, some donation gift that that uh, that somebody had given and, and I was spent out of that fund for four months. Four he months. gets on the phone. I don't know when he dialed. 
He said, I have a man that needs a job. His name is Frank Contreras. Okay. Crazy. Uh, I went to the Educational Regional Office and was there for four months. Anyway, that's the, but that's, that's, that's uh, how there's goodness in, in, in some people too, you know. Right. Things have really changed. Now you're still working. No. You're not. I, 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 I brought the, gave you the wrong oh, okay. express and I, I retired in February. Well, tell me what, over all these years that you've lived in San Marcos, what are some of the biggest changes you've seen or some of the biggest things you've seen happen here? Something important that you... Well, this, everything has changed for the better. Schools, county, community, business community, everything has changed for the better. Everything is much better than what it used to be. Um, everything. School districts. Uh, you have I think now, it would be hard. School districts. Now you have. Uh, you've had uh, superintendents, Hispanic superintendents, the administration, the teachers, the county government, the banks. You have a lot of employees that are. At that time, there were no employees in banks that were Hispanic. Uh, so, I think young people today and, would have a the, hard time believing that people got in trouble for speaking Spanish in school. That's hard to even imagine. Yeah, How, it has I, I, so I, much. I think I think that uh, they meant well. I don't think they did it out of meanness. I think they 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 uh, wanted to, us to learn. They thought that you could learn if you would stop speaking Spanish. Uh, yes, yes. I think I, I I don't think it came out of meanness. I think it was their way of wanting to help. So, uh, and I think a lot of that uh, uh, inequities were not the people; it was the institution that had put us there mm. in the those countries. Now you had four children, twins, yes. two sets of twins? One set of twins. One set of twins and four boys. Yes. And I, I, and I told them the same thing. Uh, it's not negotiable. <laughs> you, you get an so educate. they went to college too? So, yeah. Yeah. I have uh, two stepdaughters that also are in, gone to college. Wow. One is going to college. One has graduated already. So, out of your brother, your brothers and sisters, did any did any of them still live in San Marcos, or did they move away? How many stayed here in this area? Uh, one, one. Um, uh, Jesse, the oldest, just passed away. He lived in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He he went. Uh, he finished. He finished. Uh, College in 1942 or 43. That's during the war. He immediately was drafted upon completing the college, and went through the ranks and uh, retired as a colonel. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Joel, a teacher, and uh, he lives in Bernie right now. Ted uh, lives in uh, in Brownsville retired from school from health departments and Raul is in a nursing home right now so in research. so now tell, tell I read somewhere that when you were the principal that you helped start the bilingual education program here in San Marcos yes tell us about that that's a pretty important well, achievement uh, remember that that uh, what I had gone through Learn English by force, and you either uh, 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 got it from somebody else, what the teacher was saying, or you didn't know what was going on. So at that time, I came across some literature about uh, bilingual education, and that goes with the child growth and development in education. You start where the student is, 
it's in that gr uh, uh, growth and development work. And uh, I thought that uh, if we teach the concepts of math, history, and everything in Spanish, they will not be behind. And then at the same time, I'm teaching him how to, how to uh, speak English and write English. I'll teach him how to write and write in Spanish because they, it's much easier if you, if you know what you're reading, what you comprehend. So first I uh, was to teach Spanish, English, and I mean writing and, and reading and writing in Spanish. And you teach the concepts of all the other subjects in Spanish. So uh, two plus two, if you say two plus two, you know, Dos y dos son cuatro, you know, and they learn the they learn the the base system of mathematics in Spanish. Once they learn the math, that we have a base system of ten, and that it repeats itself, and then you subtract, you multiply, you do all kinds to it, and and then at the same year, you know, if he, if you teach that in English and they don't understand it, they'll. They won't learn it. So the superintendent said, "Okay, you can try." I went. I went I went, yes. How did it, I, how I, did it happen? Well, I, I I learned that that system, and uh, I I went to the superintendent and told him what I wanted to do. I wrote a paper for him, and uh, at that time I told him, "Look, you really can't measure their 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 achievements either, because you're asking them in in English." what they have learned and they can express it. The, the, you have to do also something to the testing program. And I said, I, want, I, I would like to try that, that system. And he sent me to, to, to the uh, system superintendent. And I told him what, what I wanted to do. And I remember I wrote in my paper, I said, well, if, if all the Hispanics learn how to read and write and get educated, Who's going to do the domestic work, Frank? Who said home? that? This is the assistant superintendent. Who's going to Who's going to do the work, the domestic work, the labor work? I said, well, it, it, it's not that way. It, it people get opportunities to do things, and it has to. It doesn't have to be only those that uh, uh, that are forced to be there. There has to be opportunities for for people. So he. He said, go ahead and try it, Frank. <laughs> and at that time, there was uh, Laredo United. It was the only, the only bilingual program in the state, in, perhaps in the nation. We were the second to have a bilingual program. In San Marcos. Uh, and you started it. Yes. Wow. And I had, I had some... Uh, uh, criticism from the testing department in San Marcos. You probably knew the the director of that, but she was very nice. She came, Frank. It was a uh, new concept. Because, because I said because I had said that the tests don't measure what they learn. What they learn because you're asking in the wrong language. I said, Miss. Well, who was it? <laughs> <laughs> It was uh, La Rue Miller. Oh, okay. And and uh, and when I explained that I really meant to criticize what she was doing, what she was doing was very well, and I agree with everything except that we had to do something different for this population, and she bought it also. It was a new concept. Yeah. It's still going on today. Yes, but the there's there's problems with it because the ones that are taught are teaching bilingual don't really know the. The philosophy, the theory, nor the no, they speak uh, Spanish. Some cases. You so, might have so to when come you, out of when retirement. You, so right? when you, so when you, <laughs> when you hear that bilingual education is is mm -hmm. is not working, it means that that there's something basic wrong with it. Not not this the the theory, the practice it, itself. So. And, uh, by the way, I was. I was doing a lot of things. I became bilingual director. I became director of uh, community school liaison. I became director of adult basic education. All the time that I was at Bonham, I was doing all those other things. Wow.
Oh, yeah. One of the things I read uh, was when you were principal at Bonham that there was prejudice. The kids, when they ate their tacos, they felt shame, and you ate tacos with them. Tell yes, us that story. Yes. Well, the one, one is made to feel inferior when one is not allowed to speak his native language. You immediately begin to think. Not, it just kind of builds in you that there's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with your culture. And the, what you eat is also part of your culture. It must be inferior. And you don't want, you want to, you don't want to listen to music, Spanish music in front of other people because that's, that's inferior kind of stuff. So is your food. So the way it emanates among children is that they don't want to eat tacos. They, they, we used to take tacos to eat at, at school. When I was, uh, we never ate, uh, I don't know if we had cafeteria, I came to eat at home from campus and from my school every day and then walked. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, you, the way, the, the, the way it, 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 it demonstrates itself is you take your taco in a bag and you're going to hide to eat it. That's clear evidence that there's a self-image is damaged. Clear evidence that it is damaged. So we had a, we didn't have a, a lunch room. We had a, a, a room where we go to eat, those that brought lunch. So there I go on the first day and I see the kids there and they're eating like that, uh, the taco covered with with a bag. So no one would see them eating their taco? Yes, yeah. So I knew what it was because I had felt it. And so I, I the next day uh, I tell my wife, make me some tacos, I'm going to school, I'm going to eat at school. <laughs> so I go in there and sit on the table among them and, and spread out my and take out uh, the tacos and I start to eat and they looked at me. <laughs> they looked at me. Uh, and so from there on they, they didn't hide what they were eating. But that's, that's clear evidence what uh, one of the indirect or direct things that occur when you uh, are not allowed to, to speak your language and you're made to feel inferior. Uh, I had to fight that hard. I had to fight that hard. But I, in as being a migrant, um, the picking cotton pay you by the pound. The more you pick, the more you get paid. And after the day, we the people talk about how much uh, pounds they they had picked. And there was this other family there that, God, they could, they were the best. And I always wanted to do the very best. So I tried hard. I mean, I tried hard. I, I very, came very close to being like them, but I, but I tried. So when I, come to, when I came back to school, I would try hard. I, that, trying hard at school is not difficult at all like being out in the field. There was a, so I tried in everything. I still try everything to do. Well, you've uh, set quite an example for future generations yeah. of what can be accomplished, and yeah, so. I think you can be really proud of yourself. That what I mean, the well, way things you. are today in San Marcos, it's hard to imagine how it was when you were a child and how far we've come. Mm -hmm. So I would think you've been extremely successful. You've been successful professionally, and and what a role model to all the kids to yeah. see that. Yeah. Uh, you, you wanted to know about uh, the rest of the community. I can tell you about the county level. Uh, I told that we couldn't go to rest certain well, you said, uh, places. And if you look at the courthouse today, 
The very top is Lady Justice. Mm -hmm. Left hand arm balancing a scale. And blindfolded and a sword. Blindfolded because justice, uh, the application of justice is uh, equal to everybody regardless of position in life. The sword is here to apply the symbolic of what is just and, and should be uh, um, done without uh, prejudice. You see that it's been there since it was constructed. When I went there, uh, there there's not any more. Immediately as you walk in, you have the restroom for the color and the restroom for the white. In our county courthouse that stands yes, here across the street. right there. The first floor. And there's a lot of anxiety uh, among police departments and sheriffs of how that is applied. There probably, One, there weren't any Hispanic teachers, so I'm guessing there weren't there any were Hispanic no, there were, police officers. No, there were no, uh, there, uh, the city, the county, there was none. All the employees of the courthouse were non-Hispanic, no blacks. By the way, the janitor was uh, was a Hispanic. Anyway, you you then uh, and here it is. A symbol of the Roman goddess of justice. Looking at at Saint Marcus, you go in there, and that's not true, and it's still not true. Uh, how it's applied in cases. I had, uh, we would come to a hot dog stand that, um, on Guadalupe Street uh, to eat hot dogs and then we would walk there. We were about 10, 12 years old. Uh, one of my neighbors, boy Celestino, what was his last name, was afraid to go into the courthouse. He never did go inside the courthouse. Wow. He was afraid. I don't know what experience he's had with his parents or him, but but that was the county. I believe it. Yes. It's now, that Lady Justice was struck down by lightning. <laughs> you sure you it, it was facing? It, it was facing. It was facing <laughs> south. I always thought it should be facing west. I mean, it was facing, yes, I was facing west because that's equal over there, up here is not. But not on the other side of the tracks. Uh, so, so it was struck by lightning and to me, that's an omen that somebody's trying to tell us something. It was put back, you know. And, and, but. Did y'all go to different grocery stores? Were the grocery stores segregated? Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Because the food. Y'all's food was different. Hispanic food is the best food. It's so funny well, now. Well, now it's the most popular. The <laughs> most po to hear that people were, kids were ashamed to eat their tacos. There's a taco stand on every corner now. Right, and tacos, right. You I asked would me, say you me is things the have changed. national things have, food of San Marcos. <laughs> things have changed. Things and have, I would think you've been a great influence. Well, I that that is wonderful. Thank you so much for your story. I mean, well, really, I rumble too much. Really, I don't mean to do that. Really and, uh, inspirational and, to hear what you've achieved and what your father achieved, and very great. Oh, oh, thank you so much. We really. You're welcome. You're welcome. He told us the first week that we were there in class, he says, I want you to know my policy here. I think there were two two of us that were there Hispanic, the, the rest were non-Hispanic. It says, those of you that Hispanic cannot make a grade higher than a C. Is it because it's not fair that you already have some base information about the language and the rest doesn't? Yes. That's so, unreal. Now, Throughout my career in college, I had almost all A's, some B's. But in education, I could not make a grade higher than a C. I remember that I was in class, in education class, 
and there were a lot of uh, uh, people around me. They they learned that I could do well in tests. So when when I took a test, they all were passing around. So when the grades were po posted, I did very well. Either I made a hundred ninety-eight or something. So when I got to see, I went to the teacher. I said, "Look, I I I know that I'm did." better than everybody why do i have a c a c plus he said well your papers didn't reflect that i said look you don't give letter grades on papers you give a check mark plus 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 i had check mark plus 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 but i couldn't get them to change to wow now history i could do a, a by the way i was good in english when I went to junior high, when I went to junior high, in my uh, naiveness, I thought that English-speaking people knew grammar and they could speak correctly, a uh, 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 verbal agreement to the to the verb. And when we were taking grammar, I was surprised that some didn't. I don't know why I had that in, but I did. I did very well in. Uh, one of my uh, best teacher was Mrs. Ray, my English teacher in 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 high school. Mrs. She would Ray? push Ray W R E Y. Ray. And she said she called me one day. She says, Frank. She said, "This is not acceptable. You have to do better. I know that you can do better. That you can do better." How and many I, were I, I expect the very best from you. How many you. were in your graduating class in 1955? Not many, not many. I don't remember the number. Small. But uh, I, oh, I, 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 could, uh, I could diagram sentences, complex sentences. I could, I could write. But, but, but uh, speaking was my anxiety. I, you need to know that when you, your first language, when you speak Spanish, your first language, and you learn a second language, in the process of learning that, you think Spanish, you translate to English. So you go through that process, and it's difficult. Mm -hmm. It's not as fluent as when you become fluent. And I dread it all through high, junior high and high school, because in English and also in history, you have to give all reports and books that you read. Oh, it was an agony for me to get up. I knew the material, I, I comprehend well, but to, to, to give a report, all report, in front of the class about what I had read, it was, it was, it, it, it was uh, reason enough for me to quit school, you can put it that way. Well, apparently a lot of people did. Yes. But you didn't. Uh, uh, no, no. No. And I was uh, in, uh, in, in those days in high school, I don't know if you had that, you had uh, Teacher's Day, Student's Day. There was, there was a day out of the year, it must have been in the spring, when teachers went, had teacher or workshop or something, but they didn't go to school. The students took over the school, except key teachers that stayed and the principal. And the class elected the teacher for that day. I was elected to be the English teacher. <laughs> when we went to take a, a, a picture photograph to the auditorium, I was like, you know, I'm proud. Yeah. The photographer said, um, the other teacher was, what are you doing here? He said, I'm, I'm representing the English class. So they took me down. I had to go to the office to verify that I was here. Was so those are some of my, now I had uh, like Mr. Mr. Higgs, uh, Mr. Adams, and I had good teachers. I had very good teachers. If not, I, I they yeah, believed in some teachers that believed in you and encouraged you to right, go on. Right. Yes, like Mrs. Ray. You know, you. I don't know why she she did that, but she did. 
Now, if I had listened to the counselor, I would have gone to the army. Maybe I would have gone to school after that. But uh, in my, my experiences, uh, like I said, in uh, extracurricular activities, I, I did not participate. Uh, the the Hispanics gathered. We were kind of segregated within the for socialization purposes. You had the, the right now. The schools in San Marcos are about sixty five percent Hispanic. What right. was the percentage back when you were in junior high and high school? About ten percent, probably. A small percentage yeah. of the, especially in high school, because a lot of kids had dropped out in oh, junior yes. high. Who we were too old to continue? Time to go to Some work. Some of us already had a mustache by the time we reached <laughs> <laughs> junior high. How old were you when you graduated from high school? Twenty-one. Okay, because they did those two grades in the elementary uh, yeah, yeah. that made y'all older when yeah. you finally went to junior mm -hmm, high. Mm -hmm. Yes, I must have done well at, at, at elementary school because Mrs. Mitchell was the school principal and Mr. Cattley was the the principal. And at the end of school, I was promoted from from third to fifth with the stipulation that I come in September for the fifth year. But you couldn't. I couldn't. So I, then they put you back. I when put you me didn't back come? on fourth. So that was a different and, world back then. I, that's yes. what young people today don't realize how different things were back then. Oh yes, uh, the when I came back at high school, I came in mid December. Uh, there were uh, teacher aides in high school. And they would assign me a teacher aide to, to bring me up to, um, to the le level for of what the, you had missed those few yeah, months. For yeah. example, one that was very obvious was the typing. Here I go in December, but everybody's going like that, and I didn't even know the keyboard. So they set me aside and and, and taught me, and pretty soon I could. I could type. I, but I, 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 I tried hard. I, I made up. I could, for example, the world history. They were in. I don't know what chapter already. Yeah, I would read it from the first to the. I took it upon myself. Now you had five brothers, and they all graduated from yes. high school, and they uh, went to college. college. They all graduated from college. That is amazing. Your father was immigrated yeah. from Mexico. Yes. And your mother just went to elementary school, but they had five sons that graduated from college. Yes. But That's he, but, but he, but he, but he was a good uh, uh, role person. He taught himself. Remember, he ran away from Mexico. He, he was not uh, the, his his uh, family didn't know what happened to him. He taught himself to write, read and write, to write back, to let him know that he was okay here. But for him to value education when he hadn't had the opportunity to have it himself is truly remarkable. And I remember him studying. He got his diploma via uh, a correspondence. He got a he got a high school uh, degree. I don't know if it was a uh, I don't know if it was a GED or, or but I remember that he he. Well, he would get back from work, and at nights he was studying, too. Well, so we had, we to had, become, he, he, not only, he not only said it, he practiced it, that I could, he didn't need to tell me very much, Frank, this is important. He would tell us once in a while. He said, I don't want you to go to the hardships that, that I have gone through. Well, he became a U.S. citizen. He studied yeah, to he become became a, a US citizen, citizen, and then he got a GED. Yes. Now... Uh, to become a U.S. citizen, you have to know world history. You need to know the U.S. history. You need to know Texas history. You need to know those. Guys. Apparently, he he learned all of that. That's amazing. Now, he died at the age of uh, 103, and and he never he always had his mind clear mind. I was I was just remarkable for me how he, you know like I be, I began to forget things. He. He he didn't lose that, and he read the newspaper every day. He read the newspaper. He subscribed to the newspaper, and he would uh, he I would go to a visit. I mean, we talk about current events. 
wow. in in Spanish. But he re, he would read English and and interpret uh, and uh, would talk Spanish. He did not miss a, a year that he had not voted. Wow. He voted. I remember taking him to vote when he was 101, because I would. And, and he what would was tell his name? Francisco. I'm junior. Okay. And he would Francisco. tell me, uh, voting is a privilege that you have to participate in. Don't forget that, Frank. And of course, he showed me. He demonstrated to me. Wow. He sounds like he sounds like a remarkable man. Yes. Yeah. Now you mentioned. You were on city council. Tell us about your civic uh, things that you did here in San Marcos over the years. What your involvements were? I I uh, I became involved uh, in motivating people and uh, to get out and vote uh, because of Agustin Lucio and and, and uh, Ruben Reese. Uh, they were the leaders of the community. Least people listened to him. They were trying hard to get people elected uh, uh, to city council, to school board, to county uh, offices, and uh, so we would have we would have campaigns to get people out to vote, and I was there among them. They were the leaders. I was just following, and I remember that at that time there was a taxi. If you wanted to vote, you had to pay. A poll tax. See, yeah, I call it a poll tax. Much like you need now, much like you need a, a identification card to, uh, I, uh, I equate that to, to putting barriers on people's, uh, to get them to not to vote. Uh. So, these people uh, organized uh, on uh, registration drives. And they conduct, they had uh, a dance hall out in uh, in Highway 123. There was a bowling alley out there, and they would have uh, dances during the weekends. And to get in, you have, all you needed was a poll, copy of the poll tax. To get to in to show you voted. Yes. So I became in, 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 in involved with that. And at that time, they, they, they tried, they tried hard. At that time, the people got elected at large. You, you didn't have my precinct. Right. So we were taught that you only vote if there's five candidates and there are four pos or three positions, you only vote one. You only vote for the person that you want. So that way, you don't give votes to the other and you have a better chance of getting huh. elected. That's the way we, yeah, the people, those people were elected at that time because it, we didn't have the numbers. Right. We didn't have the numbers. So that was, that was my involvement on, on that. Then they asked me if, uh, 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 if I wanted to run for, I, well, we want you to run for city council. I said, I don't know. He said, Financially, we'll 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 support you. We'll uh, you 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 just make the appearances. We ask you to go. We, you you speak and you know how to speak English. You know how to speak Spanish. You you speak and we we get you around. And I looked at it and uh, uh, the position was occupied by. Uh, well, Poole, Dr. Poole taught his Texas history at the university, and they said oh, he hasn't declared, Frank. He hasn't declared, and we want we need somebody there. Now he's a good man; we like him and everything. Uh, but before he declares, why don't you go and visit with him and tell him that you're interested in that position and see what he says. So I went and talked to Dr. Poole at the university. I said, Dr. Poole, I introduced myself and I said, this is this. And he said, you're an incumbent right now. You haven't declared. Uh, I'm interested in applying for that position, I don't, but unless you're going to continue. He said, Frank, I'm not going to run. Why don't you run? Then uh, when I declared that I was running, 
by that time I was principal at uh, at Bonham, okay. and I got a call. I'll, I don't mention names here, but I got a call from a banker. From who? A banker. Okay. A banker, one of the finance. He said, Frank, uh, could we have coffee? I said, I don't know why coffee. I mean, I, I said, I thought he wanted to speak about school or something. So we went over to a restaurant and I said, okay, I'll make time go there. He said, well, I see where you've declared to uh, run for a city council in a certain position. I said, yes, sir. He said, we want you to change. If you change to this other position, we have a person that's going to run there. If you change, we'll finance everything for you. I said, I can't do that. I said, I already declare. I said, well, say that you made a mistake. Say that you made a mistake. I said, I can't do it. He said, don't tell me no. Think about it. I said, okay. I went back and I had uh, asked Agustin Lucio, the person that I said, Agustin, when they asked me, I, I, I'll run if, if you're my campaign manager. Uh, I, really, you don't need a guy. You need, need somebody to uh, a keep person. And I went to, to him and I said, this is what's happening, Agustin. What? It's like in the movies, like something, those things are not real that happened that way. So I, I, uh, he said, that means, Frank, 